Welcome Galafam members and new viewers alike to another episode of Clash Royale. I am your host Galadon and today I bring you the Inferno Dragon world record. As it stands as of right now, the most Inferno Dragons you have ever seen on the screen at one time. A couple of guys did it and we will get to that replay in just a few minutes. But the Inferno Dragon, underrated, underused, underappreciated, or underpowered. I don't know, I don't personally use a lot of the Inferno Dragon uh, in my decks, but I thought I would give it a try. Uh, during this most recent Double Elixir Challenge, throwing out the Inferno Dragon instead of an Inferno Tower, it can work out on those big tank cards, and of course, if you get it to the tower, it is total devastation, but for me personally, I seem to have a great deal of difficulty getting it to the tower. But then many of you would say I have difficulty in other things as well. Shut up, Peter. Uh, so we'll give it a try with this double elixir challenge, just seeing if we can get the Inferno Dragon to work to do its job on defense and on offense. So I, again, this is my favorite challenge, double elixir. So glad they brought it back a second time because I asked. I'm, I'm sure that's the only reason they brought it back. Anyway, so you can see we both have the big tank cards down. I've got the Lava Hound. He's got the golem we are going to cross at the river. Uh, the tombstone trying to pull that golem off track. Gotta do something. There it is. Inferno dragon to grind that golem down. Not obviously as powerful as a regular inferno tower, but getting the job done nonetheless. By the time the golem gets there to the tower, it is just about gone. There it is. And now I've got a full health inferno dragon behind the lava hound on the way towards his tower. The lava hound going to pass right over the golem. Princesses. Two of them were doing a great job. I don't know what it is. I love just multiples. Uh, multiple princesses, multiple inferno dragons, multiple lava hounds, whatever I can get down. Right here, I've got two inferno dragons working, and it looks like we might get to the tower with one of them at least, or not. But we do get to the tower and get a lot of damage off on that tower. About 45 seconds left. Time for another lava hound. Again, loving this double elixir throughout the entire match. The Musketeer is going to get distracted again by the Tombstone. Another Princess goes down trying to support the Lava Hound and the Skeleton Army. And again, another Golem. Here we've got a big, massive push right on the bridge, moving their way forward with less than 30 seconds left. Fireball, and that finishes off the Musketeer. She is down, and that tower is in a world of hurt. The Lava Hound is on top of it, and it is just going to grind away slowly but surely until that tower is below a fireball away from death and that just means it's a matter of holding the opponent off until time counts down and i always try to drop that fireball right to land as time runs out not quite but it was close and we grab the one crown win we both throw up the good game i like it a good sport that is a, a rare thing to come across these days so we will show uh, one more Inferno Dragon replay. This is from Gabe Magania from uh, F.A. Zirconia. That is a full attack sister clan. Uh, that is the clan that is uh, honorarily run by Galamom. And uh, so Gabe Magania is in here with a kind of an unusual deck. He's got the graveyard. So it's that Airfecta deck. You've got the uh, Lava Hound, the Inferno Dragon, and a Miner and a Graveyard. So all sorts of legendary cards on this one. And he puts the Inferno Dragon down early. Usually the Inferno Dragon strategy to get it protected by the Lava Hound. And sure enough, there is the Lava Hound out in front. The Fire Spirit's doing a good job of slowing things down as well. And the uh, Dark Prince is going to get annihilated by the Inferno Dragon. And check it out right away. On top of this tower, it is not looking good, even with double elixir. Uh, Gabe's opponent, who is a level higher than him, having a hard time stopping this push. He's already on top of the tower, and there it is. The old triple MLP combination. That's Mega Minion Minor Lava Pups. Come on, you've heard of that before, of course. Anyway, so Gabe gets the tower down, 1-0 lead, and there's still a minute 45 left, and he hasn't needed the graveyard yet. The air effect of doing everything for him, the Lava Hound, Inferno Dragon, and the Mega Minion. He has the surprise of the graveyard, but the thing about a graveyard spell is it's not real effective once one tower is down because the King's Tower is going to get involved in the defense of that other tower, or the tower will defend the King's Tower. Either way, a graveyard is a great card to win 1-0. Not such a great card if you've got to try to win 2-1. So obviously right here, Gabe trying to 
focus on defending that right side. The graveyard goes down and that's going to stall out the Dark Prince and the P.E.K.K.A. And the Inferno Dragon just absolutely annihilates the P.E.K.K.A. The freeze spell coming too late for poor Miss P.E.K.K.A. And we're under a minute left. The Lava Hound has gone off to the left hand side. Everybody closing in on the King's Tower on the left ground tower. And now the dreaded Inferno Dragon lock on on the tower. Only a few hundred hit points off that tower, but it's kind of like a lumberjack. If it gets to your tower, you are going to lose hundreds in health off that tower before you can stop it. And sure enough, that tower less than half health. Mace trying to put together a big push down the left hand side with the freeze spell. Catching the Inferno Dragon, the Furnace, and the Tower, and he does tie it up. So with 23 seconds left, this battle is tied, and Gabe has got to go to work once again with the Air Effect. His King's Tower suffering a lot of damage, so suddenly both players' King's Towers pretty badly damaged. Gabe is going to drop that middle deployment, and here it is. This is Gabe showing us how Air Effecta works so well in concert with a graveyard. Check it out as the Lava Hound tanked for the graveyard. That tower down to just about a fireball away. But Gabe doesn't have a fireball, so he's got to defend and push something else in on that tower. His only direct spell damage is going to be the zap spell. Uh, that's a lot of zap spells to get through that tower. So with 40 seconds left, Gabe is going to have to put together one more real push to get this tower down. He can't just cheaply take it with direct spell damage. In comes the Lava Hound, the Fire Spirits. He's going to try to sneak in a Miner there somewhere. There you can see it, pathing off under the tower. Here comes the Miner, 38 hit points left on that tower. The Lava Pup can't get the job done. It's going to be up to that last Zap spell. Can he rotate around to it in time? In comes the Graveyard. It is going to get countered, final 10 seconds. The Zap spell is up and down, and there it is. With seven seconds left, Gabe grabs the two crown win. All right, you guys, let's move on to the Inferno Dragon world record. And this right here would be the way that I verified the Inferno Dragon world record. Now I've gotten a lot of screenshots from people who thought they had the most Inferno Dragons. This one definitely took the cake as far as just the sheer size of that blob of Inferno Dragons on the screen. So I opened up Photoshop and individually marked each and every one of the Inferno Dragons. And when I was done, there were 192, wait for it, 193 Inferno Dragons on the screen at once. And this is how Huntsman and Josh from the clan, hashtag the best, did it. And uh, they were kind enough to tweet me, to send me that screenshot. I popped in the clan, checked them out, and sure enough, 193 Inferno Dragons are about to appear on the screen. All at once! They are hackers! No, I'm kidding. Uh, they will eventually get the job done. Now, I've seen several attempts at this, and it usually comes just about the same way. You need to clear out your opponent's towers so that it's 2-2. However they do that doesn't really matter. And then obviously both players are bringing Elixir Collectors and Rage Spells. Of course Inferno Dragons, the Mirror Card, and the Clone. The Clone, that has made a huge difference obviously in the whole world record thing. Uh, a lot different than what we've used to be seeing as far as world records. And then you've got the Double Elixir Challenge. So you've got twice as much Elixir accruing throughout the entire battle, or at least throughout the first two minutes. So that does give you an advantage there as well. So I would think that we might see even more world records if people care to try with mass units, simply because of the Double Elixir Challenge for the next couple of days. So they are going to clear out those towers. And again, you can see they've got those Elixir Collector farms going down and they're going to use the Rage spell on those to Rage them up to increase the Elixir production even faster. And then eventually, it's going to be for Huntsman a complete wall of tombstones. So the Elixir Collector farm on the right hand side and the homemade graveyard on the left just streaming out these skeletons. And it's the constant feed of skeletons over the bridge that are going to stall out the Inferno Dragons. Obviously, they're going to take a couple seconds to grind through each and every skeleton. So now Josh has started to drop down the Inferno Dragons. He's mirroring them, but he's not cloning them yet. He's waiting until he's got a really big group 
of Inferno Dragons before he starts dropping the clone spells for a couple of reasons. One, he doesn't want to overrun his opponent early. And two, obviously you can't clone a clone, so he's going to be cloning the real Inferno Dragons once he's got a big, tight group of real guys going. Again, the Elixir Collector farms on the other side, and this was really well done. These guys had a great organization here, good setup. You can see the huge mass. It reminds me of an episode of Walking Dead of the skeletons coming across the bridge right there. Yes, I'm definitely a fan of that show, and now regulation just about to run out. But Josh is not going to start cloning the Inferno Dragons until there's less than a minute left in overtime. So we're going to fast forward to that final minute or so. And here we go. So under a minute left. Doesn't make sense to clone unless you can clone as many Inferno Dragons as possible. And here it comes. The first clone spell just about doubles. And then again, just a massive number of Inferno Dragons already. Check out the skeletons that are stemming the tide and the clone spells. The mirrored clone card. It is insane how big this giant pack of Inferno Dragons is getting. And with this much damage being put out, they are going to overrun those tombstones and skeletons really quickly. Lots of skeletons going down. You can see Josh making sure that he is mirror and cloning just the real pack of Inferno Dragons. Here they come on the King's Tower. And it goes down the screenshot taken right before the end. 191. Or was it 193? I'm not going back to count them. In any case, that is going to have to stand as the world record for Inferno Dragons. Thank you guys, as always, for watching all the way to the end of this episode. You are the true hashtag Galafam, and I will end this episode like I end so many of my live streams with the saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. See you guys again tomorrow. Full attack. If tomorrow's a mystery, how do you know you'll see them again tomorrow?